Hi all, welcome to the uh, current wear product overview and Q1 2020 update. Uh, we're excited to be here today to talk about some of the exciting new updates we've uh, been developing and some future uh, items that we're also producing. This webinar is being recorded, so to the extent you want to share uh, afterwards, we will be providing a video recording link so you can review it again or send it to other participants on your team. Uh, each participant is muted for this webinar. If you do have any questions or items that you'd like to bring up, feel free to use the chat and we'll be happy to address those near the end of the presentation. As far as your webinar host today, my name is Neil Lucan. I'm the Managing Director of Currentware. Uh, with me is Sai Kit Chu, who's one of our product managers here at Currentware. Uh, we'll be walking you through a PowerPoint presentation and a demo today. As far as an agenda goes, uh, we'll be talking about market trends to start. We'll then talk about some of the new features that we've released in version 5.4.3 a couple weeks ago. We'll then jump into the technical and product demo side of things. Talk about the upcoming features in version 5.5.1. We have some really exciting updates coming out. And then we'll have time for a Q&A period at the end. So starting with market trends, uh, it's really interesting to look at how data breaches and data loss has been an extremely important topic in the marketplace today. Um, the average cost of a data breach has been predicted at about four million US dollars, which is extremely expensive when you think about not only the dollar amount loss, but the regulatory compliance and operational issues that occur after a data breach or data loss. According to a number of studies, the amount of data exposed in the last decade has actually increased tenfold. And most common attacks are a denial of service, malware, ransomware, phishing, or password attacks. So being aware of this as a network administrator, or IT manager, or CIO is extremely important. And there's ways to fix these issues or at least try to prevent them, including using real-time alerting, securing your network, and keeping your software up to date. Another major market trend is the idea of a blended workforce and how it's leading to new security risks. The term blended workforce is one that has been uh, more uh, used in the past three to five years as organizations have individuals who are working remotely, uh, working from home, using contractors, and these are all leading to security risks that were never an issue before. According to a recent study, about 5 million US workers work remotely at least half the time. And the prevalence of employees regularly working from home has grown by about 200% over the last 15 years. Now, remote workers are notoriously vulnerable to cybersecurity threats. Uh, over 50% of CIOs surveyed suspect that one or more of their mobile workers has been hacked or caused a mobile security issue in the last 12 months. How to uh, prevent and, and adapt to these new security risks? We recommend things like having on-site and remote policies, internet applications, endpoint security, but also education for your workforce. The third major trend we've seen are how new regulations are increasing the legal liability and requirements for data privacy and monitoring. GDPR has been around for a number of years, but new regulatory acts such as the California Consumer Privacy Act that just came into effect this year, along with HIPAA and the Children's Information, uh, Internet Protection Act, all mean that organizations have to be more cognizant of how they're dealing with data, the type of information they're collecting, and the security related to this. This market is only going to evolve. It's going to be unpredictable as it becomes more difficult to determine how the different laws and acts interact with each other. A perfect example would be California. The state has employed their CCPA, but what happens when New York or Texas or Florida comes out with their own? Organizations need to be able to be flexible, but also aware and on top of all the constraints that their geographic jurisdiction um, requires, but also the industry that they're operating in. I think a good summary is one of the quotes that uh, a great customer of ours, Boston Centerless, uh, provided us when they were completing a case study about their use of currentware. Uh, Larry Salvucci, their internet uh, information technology manager, said the following. 
It's easy to overlook the threat that can arise from within the company, especially when devices are being taken off site. The damage that data breaches can cause is enormous, and I've become increasingly aware of the range of threats we need to defend against, from cyber attacks to simple workplace carelessness. I think this is a great quote as it summarizes a bit about the market trends, but also some of the benefits that Currentware has provided Larry and his team. So now we'll jump into uh, version 5.4.3 and the new features that are available. Uh, this was released in the first week of February and we'll talk a little bit about uh, the focus of the release and then jump into the technical side. Before jumping into the new features, I wanted to cover Access Patrol in general quickly as Access Patrol was one of the main focuses of this release. Uh, data breaches and data loss, as I've mentioned today, have become more prevalent and more important. And Access Patrol's endpoint security and uh, data loss prevention capabilities make it a very popular product and solution in the market today. So blocking endpoint devices with including USBs, Bluetooth, iPhones, etc., being able to limit read, write, and block permissions, enabling device allowed lists, and complete reporting on all of these functions and activities have made Access Patrol one of our most um, popular products, but also our one of our fastest growing. And this was the focus of the 543 release. So starting with some of the new features, uh, the first was an Active Directory import improvement. Uh, this was a new way for administrators to import OUs into the current work console. Uh, this type of integration allows administrators to easily manage users from Active Directory on the console. The second major improvement was the client connection improvement. Uh, the client ping time and timeout duration are now configurable on the current work server registry. On top of that, the data upload method can now also be modified from sockets to web services to allow better uploads. From an access patrol perspective, email alerting was a really uh, majorly requested feature by a number of our customers and prospects, and we've launched this new feature. This gives real-time analysis and understanding of what's happening on your network with your endpoints and file activities, and alerting will be a major feature that Sai will demo in a couple minutes here. Blocking file transfers and adding more capabilities to determine the types of imaging, encryption, and portable devices that can be configured in Access Patrol, and also filtering devices or files from the device reports or other major improvements. Finally, from a browse control perspective, we added a port range to the port filter. We also improved the compatibility with the new Chromium-based Microsoft Edge. So at this point, I'm gonna pass it over to Sai, who's one of our product managers. We'll be walking through the technical part of the demo. Okay, thanks, Neil. So I'm gonna switch over to our Chromium console. Perfect. I just want to give a quick introduction. This is uh, Sai, the product manager here at Currentware. And for today's technical demo, I have a few very exciting features to show you guys. I know a lot of you are waiting for these features uh, in the latest release. Um, so I'm going to uh, show you these uh, features in order of what uh, Neil introduced uh, in the previous slide. So the very first feature is the Active Directory import. Um, Let's just go over the tools, import users. So in the new feature, uh, in the new updated uh, version of this feature, we're now able to import um, organizational units into the Kremlin console and make uh, the Active Directory integration that much better. Let me just go ahead and show that to you. I'm just gonna log into our test domain here. You'll notice right away that once I log into the domain, we're pulling in Active Directory information. So there's OUs here, as well as the user. And you can select the entire OU, add it into the console. Okay. And then in the user mode, you're gonna see the OUs that uh, are imported from Active Directory. Now the second feature that Neil talked about is the advanced settings for client connection. So, this is going to improve the client connection between uh, the current work client and the server because the ping time is now um, increased from 60 seconds to 90 seconds. 
as well as the uh, in inactivity timeout period that we set for five minute, uh, three minutes before is now increased to five minutes. So it, um, with that value, uh, the client will not be uh, detected as disconnected uh, in three minutes, but instead uh, it will give them an additional two minutes to uh, confirm that and it makes the connection more, more stable. Uh, the next feature I want to show you is one of the exciting feature uh, in 543. Uh, and this is Access Patrol's um, email alerts feature. Let's just go back to PC Mo here. Yeah, email alerts. Now some of the existing current work customers that are using Browse Reporter will uh, notice the similarity here because email alerts is something that we introduced in Browse Reporter. Um, but it is something that we just improved in uh, Access Patrol. So in email alerts here, I've got a few default email alerts. Uh, uh, so ideally what you can use email alerts for is to uh, monitor uh, employees that are accessing blocked devices or monitor the files that are being transferred uh, from their computer onto their USB devices as well as uh, if they're deleting anything um, important off these company shared devices. Okay, so I'm just gonna create a sample report here for you. Okay. So this is just gonna be a test. Okay. So after you type in your alert name and email address, you'll notice that you can select the computers or users that you wanna monitor. You can monitor your entire network. And then in terms of alert types, there are two. Uh, there's going to be files or devices. So under files, we have file operations that you can monitor. Um, these are file, files that are created, copy, delete, save as, or renamed on the um, external devices. And you can also set an alert for specific file names or just any files that are being uh, uh, copied or, or deleted on those devices. Okay. So in this example, any files that are created or copied onto the external USB device will, will get an email alert uh, directly to this email address, which, which is test at currentware.com. Now the other alert type is for devices. Okay. Uh, and you can set alerts for specific devices that are plugged into your employees' computers, all devices that are plugged in, unknown devices, so an unknown device is when somebody plugs in uh, a new USB or external hard drive that has never been uh, detected by currentware before, and uh, that will trigger the alert. And then any devices that are on the allow list or any devices that are being blocked by Access Patrol. Okay. So with the email alerts, I'm actually gonna show you a sample email that's being sent. Okay. So this here is an email alert that's sent to uh, an administrator when the alert uh, was triggered because somebody was copying cat files onto their uh, external devices. So in this email, you'll see the date, time, the user, computer, and what files they copied and on what devices they copied uh, the files to. Okay. All right, so that's uh, our Access Patrol email alerts feature. Now we do have other new features on Access Patrol as well. The next feature here is the block file extensions. Okay. So blocking file extension allows you to uh, define a list of uh, files that you don't want your end users to copy to ex their external devices. So in this example, as the administrator, if I don't want them to copy any executable files or MSI files, you can add those to um, the list here. Or if we know that um, you don't want them to copy any office files, you can also add them to the extension. So once we add these to the list, if they plug in a USB device and they try to copy any files that have these file extensions, um, those, those file operations will be blocked. Okay, moving on to the next feature of Access Patrol, we've enhanced the allow list now to, um, to allow administrators to identify devices based on PMP uh, device ID. And the reason we put this in is because um, 
with encrypted uh, USB devices, we find that we're only able to get the vendor ID, and not the serial number. So by um, adding in the additional PNP device ID, we're able to uniquely identify encrypted USB as well. So this is a very new feature and it's gonna act very similar to serial number. Uh, and it's essentially lets you um, have a unique identifier for your uh, external devices. Okay, the last new feature I wanna show you of Access Patrol is our exclusion list. So the exclusion list works hand in hand with the uh, Access Patrol device reports. Um, essentially, you're now able to exclude um, devices that show up on the device report. If I were to go to device report right now and run a report here, okay. So this is a simple report that has a bunch of storage devices that are connected on Steve's computer. And one of them is a Dell, Dell wireless uh, uh, USB. So if I add that in the exclusion list here, okay, and I run that exact same report again, you'll see that it filters out the, the Dell entry, which was at the very top, um, and it removes it from the device report. Okay, so that's with Access Patrol. Now let me go over to Browse Control. Um, with Browse Control, the new feature here is related to Port Filter. So Port Filter allows you to not only uh, add a single value to uh, the list here, but you can add a, an entire range. So for cases where system admin wants to block an entire range for things like um, the torrent, you can now do that without having to add every single entry. So just having the port range will allow you to do that. Okay. All right, so that's the last feature I wanna show you guys for 543. I'm just gonna pass it back to Neil to wrap up uh, the presentation. Great, thanks, Sai. So now we're uh, excited to talk about some of the upcoming features coming out in uh, a later version of CurrentWare 551. We expect 551 to be released in Q2 2020, and our first really exciting feature that we're launching is a web console to manage administrative functions. So this has been a requested feature by a number of our customers, and our web console is something that our team has been working very hard on for a number of months. The ability to access from a browser, uh, an upgraded user interface in uh, design, uh, will be all exciting features that you'll see with the current web console. The second are improvements to Active Directory Sync and the ability to more effectively manage upgraded, sorry, added and changed users from an AV side of things. The third is Browse Reporter web page title tracking. With the browsers having more information in the actual title of a URL, giving the ability to track the web page title in your Browse Reporter reports will allow more customization and configurations. And the last major improvement are net network access restriction for Access Patrol. So the ability to prevent certain files or types of files to be transferred between internal network drives. These are just four of the major improvements that we're making in this upcoming release. However, there are also another, a number of minor tweaks and improvements that will be coming out as well. Wanted to show you a quick sneak peek of the uh, web console. Uh, it's something that um, our team is is very uh, you know, detailed working on at this moment, and this upgraded user interface should excite everyone and, and be something that uh, I'm sure many of the current wear users will be glad to use in the coming months. At this point, we wanted to pass it over for questions. As mentioned previously, the microphone is on mute, but if you'd like to send a message in the chat, you can send that, and we'll be able to uh, answer those now at this point. We did receive a couple email questions prior to starting, so I will address those first and then get to any other chat questions that come in. So the first major question will be related to uh, Access Patrol, and it came in from uh, Peter. 
So the question was related to what are the recommended configurations for employees connecting cell phones to work devices? I think this is a really good question as it involves access patrol and how devices should be configured and controlled with respect to endpoints in the workplace. I think the first question should uh, revolve around the fact that you need to understand whether your workplace policy is a BYOD, a bring your own device policy, or if it's a workplace provided a cell phone or mobile device. We highly recommend if individuals are bringing their own devices or have personal devices that are not related to work, they should be blocked completely from accessing the work computers. This includes plugging in for USBs, charging, and even Bluetooth or Wi-Fi connections. Second question we got was related to uh, the web console. Um, and they were asking about whether it'd be a cloud product and what happens to our data. So this is a question that uh, is, is a great one to understand when we're talking about the web console. When the web console is released, the entire solution will still be based on premise. We will not touch the data that you are generating or providing. It's a web console version. However, it's connecting to your local network and server. So it's really important. This is not a cloud product. This is a web console version to manage the administrative functions. However, it's not a web product. Sorry, a cloud product. And uh, we just received a, a couple other questions in the chat and Sai is going to address those now. Okay, so we got a question from Michael regarding Browse Reporter and it's related to remote screen capture. Um, so the question is, Browse Reporter shows dual screen desktop with rotated displays inaccurately. Is there a fix coming? Um, so we are working on the remote screen capture um, and it, it is something that, that our developers are looking into. It's more of a fix than uh, a, a, an update. So once we have any more, any new information regarding this fix, we'll send that to you, uh, Michael. And then another question is from Jordan about the ability to block um, local printers connected via USB. Now, Jordan, this is definitely coming in 551. We're in the process of um, splitting the group that we have for imaging devices into scanners, webcam, printers, um, as well as cameras. So while we're doing that, uh, the local printers will be a separate group as well, and you should be able to uh, block it via USB. So that is coming up in version 551. Feel free to send any other uh, questions in the chat. Uh, we did have one other question by email that we can address if uh, there's no other questions on the chat. Okay, great. So the uh, last question then we'll uh, address today is again related to access patrol and alerting. Uh, so the question was related to how does the alerting actually get managed and what are the recommended types of alerts to set up? So alerting is a feature that will give administrators that real-time look into what is occurring based on the endpoint restriction and policies they've set for their organization. Depending on what's been communicated to your employees, that's when you should determine what types of alerts to set up. So let's use an example. If you very clearly communicated that only 10 types of uh, USB devices that are restricted based on serial number should be allowed to be used in your organization, then setting up an alert if any other device is connected that's a data storage device should be the type of alert that's configured. So it would be a high risk element if an individual implemented or tried to plug in a hard disk or a storage device when they know that their organization does not allow that. So being able to understand the entire organization's policy will be the way to determine what alerts to set up. We have actually just got a couple other uh, questions come in. Um, so a uh, question just came in from Panos. Uh, would it be possible to have info about files that a user sends via email? Uh, so this is a, a great question. At this point, uh, the current work solution does not uh, track emails. It is something that our product team is looking at for a future product. 
It would not be uh, implemented as part of Access Patrol because there are many other uh, ways that emails should be uh, dealt with and tracked and the different type of product versus endpoints related to physical endpoints like Access Patrol. But we do always appreciate this type of feedback in ways that uh, we can improve the product. All right, perfect. Well, we really appreciate the time everyone took today to attend this webinar. Uh, we do um, really appreciate uh, the ability to uh, share these new features with you and uh, look forward to uh, showing in this recording with uh, you and you can share it with members of your team and look forward to uh, doing another webinar with you in the future. Thank you very much.